So go ahead and start. I hear the crying of the hungry in the deserts where they're wandering. Hear them crying out for heaven's own benevolence upon them. I hear destructive power prevailing. I hear fools falsely hailing to the wicked wits of tyrants when they call. I hear them all, I hear them all, I hear them all. I hear the sound of tearing pages and the roar of burning paper. All the crimes and acquisitions turn to air and ash and vapor. And the rattle of the shackle far beyond emancipators take their places in the, in the lowliest who gather in their stalls. I hear them all, I hear them all, I hear them all. While you sit and whistle, Dixie, with your money and your power, I can hear the flowers growing in the rubble of the towers. I hear leaders quit their lying, I hear babies quit their crying, I hear soldiers quit their dying one and all. I hear them all, I hear them all, I hear them all. I hear the tender words of Zion, I hear Noah's waterfall, hear the gentle Lamb of Judah sleeping at the feet of Buddha, and the prophets from Elijah to the old Paiute Wovoka take their places at the table when they're called. I hear them all, 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 I hear them all. I hear them all, I hear them all, I hear them all. Good morning. Welcome to Unitarian Church of Los Angeles. How about now? There we go. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Los Alamos. I'm the Reverend John Cullen, and your minister here as Unitarian Universalists. We affirm and promote the inherent worth and dignity of all people and gather together in a free and responsible search for truth and meaning. Whoever you are, whomever you love, wherever you are at this moment, wherever you are on your life's journey, you are welcome to be a part of this community. On this day, as with so many Sundays, we come in from the whirling world. The wind, the bright sun, the push and pull of tides and time, from the tumult of global news and local stories, the pain we hear of, the demands on our spirits, the do-this-now culture that we live in. We come into this sanctuary from that windstorm. The rush of speeding drivers on the roadways, the rustling silence that fills some of our homes, the vastness of a once busy and perhaps now quieter house. All of this can leave us feeling stirred and unsettled. When we give our attention to what's going on around and beyond us in this throbbing world, we can feel wind blown. We need places where we can come and find our grounding once again. Come in. 
Come in from the wind. Come in from the whirl. May this place be a place where we can experience genuine stillness, even just for a few moments. May this place be a place that we can count on as we turn into the driveway and view the lovely gardens here, or as we turn on our computers and come seeking our congregational homepage. May we feel pulled into a restorative time of energetic peace. May this be a place of learning and nourishment, a community that generates new zest in us for the dynamic beauty of this world. Come, let us worship together on this beautiful morning. Would you all please rise in body or spirit and join in our opening hymn number 21. remain standing and join in our affirmation. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest for truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve life in fellowship, to the end that all souls shall grow in harmony. Thus do we covenant with each and with all. Please be seated. I light a candle this morning for Nex Benedict, for their family and friends, for the students of Owasso High School, for the community of Tulsa, and for LGBTQ youth all throughout Oklahoma. For all our joys, all our sorrows, whether we share them with one another or we hold them close and quiet in our hearts, let us be together now in a moment of silence.
eternal and beloved, gracious source of all life and all love, we come together this morning grateful for this time out of time, which we have set apart so that we might become more fully present to ourselves, to one another, to that which we call holy. May our joys be celebrated together, our wounds be healed together, our hearts be opened together. May we be reminded this day of those simple truths that so often become lost amid the frenzied hours of our days. May we be reminded that we are loved without cost or demand, even when we feel undeserving. May we be reminded that we are worthy of a place at the table of creation, even when others call our worthiness into question. May we be reminded that others touch our lives and that others are touched by our lives, even when we feel as though we are living alone or in the dark. May we be reminded that the seeds of love and understanding are planted within us at birth and that it is the greatest call of our faith to find and to nourish those seeds in ourselves and each other. May we hold this community in our hearts throughout the week to come and in turn know that we are held by it. All this we pray in the names of those known and unknown, present and absent, remembered and forgotten, in the names of all the helpers of humankind. Amen. ministry that was founded by this woman, Trisha Hersey. So if you don't know about it, look it up. There's a website. You can learn more about it. But yeah, I really like NAPs. So the NAP ministry also has um, this rest 
deck, which is pretty cool. That helps us like just take some time to rest, right? Because I bet you guys and you guys are super busy all the time. Like school, activities. What kind of activities do you do? Do you do like things after school? You were doing hockey, right? That was busy, right? Ski school, oh yeah. So yeah, you're busy all the time, right? So I wanna know, This is. these are some ways in here that kind of help us to uh, remind us to rest. So staring out the window and gazing at the sky or a tree is rest, right? Um, and then as I rest, I must make space for others to rest, right? And naps are a portal to healing dream space. Hmm. So how, I'm wondering how some of you guys rest. How do you like to rest? What do you think? Either one. You can raise your hand. You like to rest at night? And what? Ooh, video games helps you kind of just rest and relax. And at night, yeah? Any others? Call them out. Raise your hand. Walks. walks, yeah, walks. Oh, what yeah, what relaxes you? Oh, video, games. video games relaxes you, cool. Isolation, in my room. Isolation, alone time, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else? That'd be cool. Yoga. Yoga, yeah, yeah. That's really relaxing and nice. Cool. Well, yeah, so just like this rest deck reminds us to rest, you guys today can write down or draw some of what helps you relax and rest. And if any adults want these too, you can pick them up for your rest card or deck. Um, so that's what we're gonna do today is talk about resting and relaxing and what helps us do that, right? So that's what John is gonna be talking about today. And you guys can reflect on what you think and draw what you think your rest is. Does that sound okay? All right, here, you can take a few if you want. Yeah, there you go. So that is our activity for today. So yes, go and rest. Find time to rest in your life. And look up the nap minstrel. <laughs> yeah, speaking of rest, we were just solving a parenting crisis. So. You know how it goes. <laughs> One foot in front of the other, stepping into the here and now. I'm not sure just where I'm going, but I will get there anyhow. I got this far with no direction, followed my nose to where I stand. My heart's still strong, I know I'll make it sit right down in the promised land. Sister, come and walk beside me, till our pathways do divide nothing much but love to give you even less have I to hide when we parted in the springtime so many questions on my mind summer came and left me waiting not one answer could I find but I see you in the Rocky Mountains feel you on the great North Sea lonesome road I have to travel but you will always be with me brother come and walk beside me till our pathways do divide nothing much but love give you even less have I to hide. 
I hear laughter in the thunder, I feel comfort on the wind, I see hope in hopeless faces, someday they will love again. People come and walk beside me, till our pathways do divide, nothing much but love to give you. Even less have I to hide People come and walk beside me In pathways to divide Nothing much but love to give you Even less have I to This morning, I would like to advocate for the universal pause button. Not just a pause on my, my iPhone when I'm listening to music, not just a pause button when whatever I'm streaming on my smart TV. I'm talking about like a, a, a pause button for everything, pause button for life. I would like to get a patent on that idea right now. Wouldn't that be great? Just to, just to, it all gets too much. Because sometimes that's what's going on. Sometimes the week is too much for all of us. Most weeks, I have got to force myself to shut the computer and stop doom scrolling through the Washington Post or whatever I happen to be reading that morning. I torture myself by reading the Washington Post with my morning copy. That's how I start my day. Um, I probably should have a better practice there. Because this week alone, we had the death of next Benedict, as I mentioned in our prayer earlier, which was heartbreaking enough. Uh, and then we had a judge in Alabama cite scripture over law to declare that embryos were, were human beings. A woman named Ebony Pouncey in Houston, akin to Brianna Taylor, was shot to death by police through the windows of her own home this week. And in global news, the UN Human Rights Commission was in Ukraine and declared that the, war, the end to that war was, was nowhere near in sight. And just to, to add insult to injury there, they said, quote unquote, the era of European peace is over. Oh my God. And that's not including uh, whatever crisis of the moment we might be going through in our homes, in our jobs, at school, whatever we're dealing with, good Lord, can we just stop for a minute, right? It's too much. We are open-hearted people, I like to think, Unitarian Universalists, and there's so much going on for open-hearted people, it starts to hurt after a while, like, like a soul ache, right? Just makes you wanna shut down sometimes. The word we are talking about for this pause is retreat. Now, retreat could be just the act of doing something, taking that pause for a bit. It could be a physical place we go to in order to take that pause. Just taking time to step out of the world for a minute, take a break from it all so we can slow down, and just figure out what the next simple thing we can do is. We need to take that pause from time to time. But we don't let ourselves do it all that easily. Retreat. 
we get a little tied up in the, the shadow aspects of that world, word, the, the military sense of that world. Sometimes as a human beings, we think of retreat as ceding territory to somebody, withdrawing completely from some problem, running away from things, taking a weak action, retreat. And we get so wrapped up in that meaning of the word, we, we don't let ourselves do it all that often. And we find great excuses for it, too. I mean, after all, I'm going through some stuff, but that stuff's not all that bad, right? I mean, compared to other people in this world, what right do I have to complain, right? Somewhere, someone is in much more pain than I am. Somewhere, there's someone who's feeling emptier than I do in the moment. Somewhere, there is somebody who needs to feel fixed. There is somebody or somebodies who need us more than we need to take care of ourselves almost every moment of every day. Hey, you know, what's going on in here ain't so bad, right? I don't need a retreat. It's a terrible trick we play on ourselves. On the one hand, yeah, it's true. Somebody else probably has it worse than we do in any given moment. And at the same time, that does not negate the realness of whatever it is we're feeling in the moment, in that moment of being overwhelmed by everything, that running on empty feeling is visceral. It feels frighteningly real, doesn't it? So we need to take that time to pause. We need to be able to retreat. And let me be clear, that retreat is not a surrender. It's not the ceding of any territory. It is a moment when we realize that we can have compassion for ourselves. And we are a compassionate, open-hearted people. But that compassion starts at home. That compassion is a muscle. We need to be able to, to exercise and flex it. So we start with ourselves, with that open-hearted muscle, the metaphysical one. To retreat is to recognize the pain and the emptiness that we are feeling in the face of the world, in the face of our daily lives, and being able to be compassionate to ourselves. That compassion is what drives our open-heartedness. And that compassion is also what gets drained from us when we live out our open-hearted lives in the world around us with everything going on, with everything being to everything. We can't maintain that outlook on the world if we're not kind to ourselves in the process. And the more that we can take this pause to be compassionate to ourselves, to behave as though we are on our own side, because after all, somebody has to be, right? If we can behave as though we are on our own side for once, the more we can do that, the more we build our capacity to be compassionate to others. To retreat is to take just a moment to be on our own side. Stop and think for a minute. Do you remember what it feels like? when somebody is on your side? Do you remember what that did for your heart, for your soul, for your capacity to love? What a gift it is then to step back for a second and be on your own side in those moments, to feel that compassion for yourself again, to recognize once and for all that that exposed nerve is getting frayed the more and more we engage with the world. It's starting to feel really tender in there. So we pause. We retreat. That could be a physical place we go to. It could just be a mental state or a happy place. 
It could be that moment when we're just full of rage and despair for the world. It's a place we need to go to, a place that we build for ourselves. Not a fortress now, not something with sturdy, impenetrable walls. Something more like a tent. Something we can pop up easily when we need that space and then can pack up just as quickly. Because while we need retreat, we cannot stay in our retreat forever. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the cornfields. And as he and the disciples made their way, they began to pluck heads of the grain as they walked by. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiathar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priests to eat. And he gave some to his companions. And then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath The pause to retreat is not enough on its own. It's not enough to just remove oneself from the stress, to just wall oneself off from the world. In this gospel passage from Mark, Jesus is talking about the Sabbath and and what it is made for. Now, in Jesus' time, especially among the Pharisees of his time, the purpose of Sabbath was to live by the letter of the law to stop work completely, to do nothing, to just stop doing. Don't do anything that resembles work. Don't lift a finger. This is the day of rest. And yet here we find Jesus and his disciples wandering through a cornfield for some reason on a Sabbath, and his disciples just kind of absentmindedly picking grains of corn off the heads in the field. I've done stuff like that absentmindedly before of you. You're out on a nature walk and you just start plucking at the flora by you. Here they are wandering through the cornfield, plucking the grains off the corn. And there are the Pharisees. And put aside the question right now why the Pharisees are out in a cornfield on the Sabbath. It's a story, folks. The Pharisees are watching the disciples, and they're saying, "Uh, uh, uh, hey, hey, that's work. You're not supposed to be doing that. What do you think you're doing? And Jesus being Jesus, which is to say a really funny guy, if you read the Gospels with the right lens, he is hysterical. Jesus answers their question with another question. Complete non sequitur. What do you think you're doing? Hey, do you guys remember the story about that time that David and his friends were hungry? So they just walked into the temple and they took the bread the priest had and they just started to eat it? That's his answer to the question. David and his friends were hungry. So they did what they needed to feed themselves. And in fact, the text literally says they ate the bread of the presence, the presence of God in the temple. So they're not just hungry, they're soul hungry. They need to feed something deeper inside themselves. 
So they walk in and they eat the bread of the presence, they eat what they need, they do what they need to fill themselves, to fill their souls and recharge. And here we are with this non sequitur from Jesus and what he's really asking is, what's the point of rest in the first place, guys? Is it to freeze in time for a day and just pedantically follow the rules? Or is it to recharge those inner batteries? What is the point of the pause but to fill yourself with what you need to get through the rest of the week? And then just to bring the point home more in the scripture that falls immediately after that, Jesus goes out and heals a man's withered hand in the synagogue just to hammer that point home a little, a little more because, you know, if, if what you need to do in the moment to fill your soul is take care of somebody who is sick or injured, go for it, right? The Sabbath was made for humankind, as it says in this particular translation, to recharge, to fill ourselves up with what we need. Do what you have to do to fill yourself up, to fill your soul. Remember what it is that feeds your soul, that lifts your spirit. Back when I took my first sabbatical about 10 years ago, I started to engage with a spiritual director who I'm still working with 10 years later. She asked me what I was looking to do with the start of this very large pause I had set up for myself. And I said, um, I need to rediscover joy in my life because I had completely lost that sense and that capacity in my day-to-day -day work I didn't know what it meant to feel joyful with what I do anymore, to enjoy what I do, to be fed by the thing that I'm called to do, which is kind of a problem for a minister. I needed to rediscover joy, what fed me, what filled my soul so I could carry out my call. So I started delving back into my writing practice and my creative practices and learning how to just be present to the life around me and the creative energy around me. Instead of building up that fortress of a pause around myself that cut me off from the world rather than just giving myself a break from it so that I could learn how to enjoy myself and my work again. So that I could find joy which in light of the world today might sound like a frivolous response given everything I just recited at the beginning of the sermon. Joy? There's so much darkness in the world. There is so much going on that is too much, so much going wrong. How could I dare to stop for a moment and feel joyful about anything? And the answer to that is simply this, that joy, that thing that feeds you, whatever it might be, that's the natural progression coming out of that moment when we start to feel compassion for ourselves again. And can take that break to step away from whatever it is that is emptying us out completely and causing us to hurt. It's okay to feel joy to feel your spirit lifted, to feel your spirit filled in the midst of the darkness. Because otherwise, when the light returns, how y'all gonna remember how to do it, right? This is an easy trap to fall into, forgetting joy, forgetting what fills you. Because there is so much going on. I, Today, I, I don't engage in my writing practice, again, probably on the regular basis in the way that I should, in a way that fills me, to the point where a few weeks ago, I took a day off on my day off, which, yes, is an intentional practice. I took a day off, and I sat down to write, 
and I opened up a short story that I had started and realized the last time I had opened up that file was a year ago. Yeah. And then I started to kick myself. Oh, jeez, I'm so bad at my writing practice. I'm terrible, I'm horrible, I'm letting it all go. And I start shooting on myself. You should be doing this. You have to do the thing that fills you. Turn that into your job. And the more I should myself, the less and less energy I have to actually pick up the practice I'm telling myself I should be picking up. And I start kicking myself even more for not doing what I think I should be doing to fill myself. And it's this awful downward spiral. I need to pause because I'm creating my own downward, spi downward spiral of, of some darkness just within my own self punishing myself for not doing what I think I should be doing to fill myself so I can do what I think I should be doing with everyone else. You see where we go here? I need to pause to take that moment to feel compassion for myself again, some kindness for myself again to stop saying, you should have done that, you should have done this. Because there are no shoulds with this. All we need to hold on to is that now is a new moment. This is where we forget all the stuff we have recriminations about in ourselves and just start again. How are you going to carry yourself forward now, how are you going to fill yourself now? How are you going to rediscover joy now? How are you going to rebuild your capacity now? Just do the thing now. Do what you need to do to fill your soul. Do what fills you up and take joy in it and be mindful of it while you're doing it. And remember how it feels to do that thing because that memory will carry you on as well. That memory will feed you even when you can't be doing the thing that fills you up exactly. Because what is the point of rest if not to fill and renew your open heart? So what all of this is really leading to is a sense of resilience, which is a very complicated word. It is a complicated topic. I am barely skating across the surface of it this morning, this resilience. What it is is this elasticity of the soul, the elasticity of our psyche. Our ability to bounce back from adversity, to marshal our personal resources and build that capacity to renew ourselves so that we continue to engage with the world around us and not completely retreat into a fortress. And there are a lot of skills involved in building this capacity for resilience, more than what I am talking about today. And it is easier for some, and it is harder for others. And some of us might need a little extra help in building up that capacity for resilience. But I focus on these two pieces this morning, this retreat and recharging, because it's my observation of humanity in general that this is what we have the hardest time doing as a species letting ourselves take a break from everything, 
getting off the endless cycle of the rat race and the go, go, go to give ourselves a chance to renew and rebuild what's within us already. What's within us that will let us do something in the face of it all. Neurophysiology is starting to find that our brains and our emotional capacity works a lot like a muscle. As I just said earlier, our compassion is a muscle. The repeated firing of our neurons is like the repetition of a lifted weight. When we're firing our neurons for the purpose of things like finding joy and taking rest and feeling compassion for ourselves and for others, that builds our capacity to pause and renew that much easier. This exercise starts at home. It starts from within. And that ability to pause, that ability to retreat, and that ability to recharge ourselves are the areas I think are the most struggle for all of us. We struggle giving ourselves a break and we need to do it with more frequency. That is, after all, why the Sabbath happens once a week. It was made for us. I highly advocate taking a Sabbath day, even if it's not on a Sunday. Mine is not on a Sunday. Uh, I, I am working today. This is, this is not a day of rest for me at all. But the Sabbath is just one day out of the week. And the reason it is only one day out of the week is that, as I've said, that retreat we go to is not a fortress. It is a tent. It is something we have to be able to collapse and be able to pack up again so that we can return to the world. We have to go back to the world with whatever it is we have built up in our reserves, in our capacity. It's the whole meaning of that elasticity of the soul, of the psyche. That capacity is going to bounce back towards something, and where it's bouncing back to is our engagement with everyone else and all our open-heartedness. Our capacity for compassion, built and flexed up repetition after repetition, could lead us really nowhere else but to that outside world again. Because what good is the open heart if it's not open to someone or something? What else can an open-hearted people do but return to the world knowing finally at last that our capacity for compassion, for resolve, for stick to all of these are renewable resources. What is within us will flow freely from us, from out of our open hearts, to the world around us, and the world is waiting for what we have to give them. And when those reserves hit that low point again, we know we can pause without guilt, without regret, recharge and rebuild what we need to within us because the world will still be there once we break the tent down, waiting for us to return with everything we have. May it be so.
And as we prepare to return to those everyday lives, it's now time to give something of the gifts of this congregation back to the larger community we are part of. It is time for our offering. During this month of February, all cash and undesignated funds that we collect will be given to our friends in our partner church in Fenyukut, Romania. You may give through the basket this morning or through the GiveLify app, which you can access from the QR code with your phones. The offering will now be accepted. May what you give bring you joy and into deeper relationship with this community. Just a couple of announcements before we move on today. First, uh, stick around after the service, right back in here. Today is our uh, rescheduled forum from earlier in this month. Uh, our guests are here with us today, and we hope you'll stick around to, to listen to them. And the Española Pathways Shelter uh, Goods and Donation Drive is ongoing right now. It'll be up through March 17th. Tyler Taylor is coordinating that, that for us. There are some uh, slips of paper on the table on your way in that give a list of some of the goods that, are be looking, that they are looking for. Uh, you can also make financial donations directly to the shelter as well if you choose to do that. And now would you all please rise once more and body your spirit and join in our closing hymn, number 12. Friends, may life bless us and keep us. May the light of life shine upon us and out from within us and be gracious to us and bring us peace. For this is the day 
This is the one wild and precious life we have been given, so let us all find a way to rejoice and be glad in it. Go in peace. <laughs>